really quick, I want to go back to uh, Toronto. Um, another, another, and I, that's crazy because I, I don't. It's it's crazy. Such it's another unfortunate, unnecessary situation in regards to you know police shooting an unarmed black man, uh, Jacob Blake. Um, you know it's it's sad that we got to keep dealing with this. But I want to go back to the Toronto Raptors because a couple of the players, uh, Fred Van Fleet, um, leading the, leading the, the way, um, we're talking about boycotting playoff games or a playoff game because of what just happened. Um, what what's your thoughts on that, and how the league should handle it if that was to be the case um that's i mean that's that's a very difficult um but it's a very great question if they were to boycott it though i don't agree with it i'm just trying to put my mindset and put my mind in the state of the league and business if they were to boycott it i think you would have to treat it as a forfeit of a game or multiple games um I would res- personally, I would respect what the Raptors are doing and what they're trying to do. We understand that we can't just try to bring awareness to these issues. We got to try to force change. We got to try to force things to be done the right way. I just don't know that if boycotting a game is going to do that. Um, and I don't know what we need to do to change it because unfortunately, uh, you know, we're almost nine months into this year and we've seen some despicable things in regards to police brutality, in regards to losing lives of, of innocent minority men and women in this country. And I don't know what we are supposed to do at this point. You know, seeing that video of Jacob Blake is, is beyond disturbing. It's disgusting. It's, it's murder. It's an attempted murder. I should say, you know, um, he survived the shoot- shooting and I-, I was hearing that I don't know how true this is. Cause I've been on the road the last few days, but you know, I think there was a statement I believe from his dad saying that he is, he's paralyzed from this incident. Yeah. And, and it's, so it's, it's disgusting. Paralyzed. Yeah. It's, it's disgusting what we're seeing that this continues to happen over and over and over. And so personally I would support the Raptors and saying, no, we're not going to play because we want change. And if this is a way to draw attention to change, so be it. But from the league perspective, from the business side of things, purely from the business side of things, I think if you're the NBA, you would have to consider it a forfeit of a game, whoever they would be playing in that next round, um, which is going to be Boston. You would have to say Boston wins game one. You know, it no. sucks. It sucks. But I think that's the, that's the way the league would, would go. Now, next question, we got, we got to go break, break down the scenarios. What happens if Toronto says we're going to boycott, and as a result of Toronto saying we're going to boycott, every team says we're going to boycott? Only thing you could do, if, if that were to happen, I think the league's immediate reaction would be to delay the playoffs probably for a week to figure out how they can move forward. Because then at that point, if you've got a collective of, and we're talking second round teams at that point, yeah. that's a collective of eight teams that are saying we're not playing. So therefore this season cannot continue. The league would have to, I think, suspend play at least for a week, sit down with the players association and figure out what they could do to resolve the issue. On the surface, I think Adam Silver would be very open to trying to come to a compromise with the players because we've seen that his history has been such of, I want to work with the players and I want to come to a compromise that everyone is happy with on the business side of things though. If you're the players and you're willing to boycott uh, a game or a playoff series, then you've got to be willing to forfeit some of that money that would have been coming long-term because I think if you shut down the business, you got to realize that there are going to be some repercussions from that. And one of the biggest repercussions is going to be the effects to your bottom dollar, to your bottom line in your pocket. So I would applaud the players for doing it, but I would also say be wise and understand that everybody doesn't have a, a 
lifetime Nike deal like LeBron James. Everybody doesn't have a $100 million contract like James Harden. You know what I'm saying? Everybody isn't about to be a free agent like Giannis Antetokounmpo. Some of these guys really need that next paycheck. So if, if we're going to boycott, we better make sure that we're boycotting and we're going to get the results we want from it because they're – more players are going to be affected by losing salary than, you know, the top 10 guys who are, who are secure in their future. Yeah. And, and I think that's the, the, the deal with that particular situation. If they were to boycott, that's also the situation that we're dealing with as a country in regards to, you know, moving towards this next election and, and, and what we want. We need to know exactly what we want. So, you know, it is great when you see all of the activism and everything that's been going on. Um, but there also needs to be a clear path of what needs to be accomplished um, moving forward. So if you are going to boycott, because I feel like, I mean, it's obvious, it's, it's definitely spur of the moment because we're basing this off of something that just happened um, recently with, uh, with, with Jacob Blake. So it's a, a real extreme emotion that's going, that's, you know, that's taking place right now to say we're going to boycott. So did you really say, you know what I'm saying, did, have you been able to actually lock down and say, all right, we're going to boycott, but this is what we're trying to accomplish from the boycott? Or did you just say, let's think about boycotting this game? Because those are two completely different things. And if you boycott and you boycott alone, you just wind up losing games. But if you boycott and because you boycott the rest of the, the teams that are left, they boycott. Then now you're talking about shutting down the NBA. So you really need to have a plan of, all right, if, if we're all going to boycott, this is what we're going to want to see happen before we go back to playing. Now, I don't know necessarily if, if it's something that the NBA even has the power to do because it could be on some we're not going to play. And so Breonna Taylor's killers are, are, are all arrested and tried or and, and, and officers involved with J, the Jacob Blake shooting, you know, ha, have been arrested or whatever they're going to do in that situation, how they're going to punish those, those guys as well. So you, you'd have to have some kind of idea of what you're trying to accomplish with the boy, a boy guy. Absolutely. Um, Matt Barnes. And shout out to Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson from uh, All the Smoke. Mm -hmm. um, Matt Barnes had talked about when he was on that Clipper team during the Donald Sterling um, scandal and how going into that playoff game, they, they didn't even really know what they wanted to do because they weren't sure, as you mentioned, like, are we boycotting one game? Are we doing a series? If we do the series, what are the ramifications of this? And he talked about it. He said, look, had we boycotted that one particular game, the Warriors were probably going to boycott with us or, or, or protest with us and not play. He goes, but beyond that one game, we didn't know what the league was going to do. Because if the league had said, hey, look, every game you, you boycott, you forfeit, at that point, the Warriors aren't going to keep boycotting. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're going to play because it's not their owner that's causing the scandal. Yeah. And so – you never want to come across, as you mentioned, as the, the team that like, oh, we did it for one game and that was it. No, you want to do it with a purpose. So I think the that players was a, so, that was an easy situation. That was a much say, easier. Yeah, right. like we want this guy out and that's it. This right. is a whole other thing. Right, right. That was much easier because not only did the Clippers want him gone, everybody wanted him gone anyway. Yeah. This is it's much larger because even if you protest, can you still force the powers that be to take action, right? If you're the Raptors and you protest, are we going to, or is that going to put enough political pressure to bring justice on these officers who shot at an unarmed man? Is this going to bring political pressure on the officers who killed an un unarmed, woman, un unarmed, woman, unarmed woman in her home? I apologize. So, you know, those are the things you got to factor in. Like, is that going to be enough to pressure them? And then if it's not enough to pressure them, should we do this at all? You know what I'm saying? Because protesting games, if nothing's going to come from it, you're only hurting yourself at that point. Yeah. So I would, I would hope that the Raptors and all players and all teams really weigh the options and say, what is the best course of action at this point to really 
bring justice because we, we're not just talking about bringing awareness anymore. We want to bring justice to these situations. Yeah, and I, and I don't think that NBA, the NBA is stopping play is going to be the thing that leads to these officers being arrested. It just, you know what I mean? Like, because even if you say, like, I, I heard someone saying, well, what the NBA should do is not go to particular cities. That, you know what I mean? So, but even even with that, that's not enough for somebody. If, if we don't want to arrest somebody, we don't want to do what they're going to do, then they ain't going to do it. It don't, it don't really matter. You know what I'm saying? The NBA saying we're going to boycott the place and we're going to boycott doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you, you got to have you got to have a better plan of action. So I don't th- I don't think that it will happen in, in this case just because it's a situation where what can you, you know, accomplish from that standpoint by boycotting other than forfeiting games? Because there's a chance that you could be boycotting on, you know, by your damn self. And now you're just losing games in a situation where you're in the second round of the playoffs. And if you want to go back to playing basketball and winning the championship, you know what I'm saying, then you're going to need those games. Now, if, you, if you're willing to just be like, all right, we'll forfeit the rest of our playoff games and then go home, then, hey, you know, do what you got to do. But, you know, I I know I, I can't say in that situation, I'd be like, all right, yeah, let's work at nine. At this point, we're here. It's time. Let's, let's get this chip. We can figure out other ways to, you know, to fight the, the fight at that point. But we're, we're already locked into this thing. It took a lot to get us here, a lot of money, a lot of sacrifice to get us into this bubble. And I know, you know, this is a tragedy, and I don't want to make light of that or take away from that. But we're talking about NBA players right now inside of the NBA bubble and what they would really realistically be able to accomplish in that moment by boycotting. Because in reality, the, the players really have the support of the league when they're doing any kind of, um, you know, anything in, involved in social justice, when they're working in the community. You know, because it's not just about, you know, the protests and all, or the marching or whatever, but the work that the NBA does, is, you know, with NBA Cares. And then with, with each individual athlete that has a charity organization, because a lot of these guys, uh, Ray Allen's, uh, you know, organization, LeBron, like all of these guys have, you know, these charitable organizations where they're giving back and helping to build up communities throughout the the, the country. Right, this is your African King's coming, Michael Blackson. You're watching Real Friends Real Talk. Get real with it, my son. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real 